Welcome, gearheads, to another Lug Nuts podcast. D Ray leaked all over the internet. So we'll look. At the Camaro and Caddy to go. Audi Duncan Vrooker? Something. Jeep stops. Peugeot goes and goes. That and more. Thank you for joining us. Play on my tanger. Drive on lug nuts. Right on over here. Facebook.com backslash lug pot. Blah. Facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast. Don't you know? And that's where you're going to find all of the crazy and luggy and nutty content. Uh, you'll also find it over at PJADWH.com and all of their social medias. I want you to make sure to go and schedule out the great media comic con over at media PA at the media convention center. Um, it's going to be a great comic con, best comic con in the world. You're going to love it. Just like it, you're going to love this first story. This <laughs> week, we had some leaks. The, the Chevy E-Ray leaked all over the internet. But giggity? we can take a glimpse right here. Is this that what a giggity? The new, I don't know if that's a giggity. I, it leaked all over the internet, and here's the leaked photos. There's some more below. I feel dirty. We only have a, a few uh, details. Not many. We have a good look at a steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. Thank Next God. photo uh, shows that there will be 13 whole colors. Oh. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's It looks like it badass. comes in a convertible uh, here behind me. Yeah, right, right there. Here. The options. In the uh, bottom here, yeah. Uh, yeah. So a lot of uh, different kind of options here. We did get other information. There will be regener regenerative braking. As you see here, we have different rims. Yeah. Lots of different options. This yeah. was a leak. I'm sure they'll actually give us some more information down the line. It does not look bad. I won't say, I mean, you know, whenever you look at a Corvette, it pretty much has that. Yeah, it's like the Porsche syndrome. It's mm -hmm. going to look like the thing before. It, it looks good. It looks good. And it's you not know, a bad look. Not a bad first but a lot of people are going to grab it just because it's the first electric. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Take it, you put it in a barn, and hope it doesn't burst into flames. And then you don't touch that barn dust, because like we learned last week, they, they'll, they'll kill you over That's that right. barn I'll dust. That's right, I'll kill you. <laughs> don't touch that barn dust that broke out, kick on the barn cars. I, I told you not kill there. him. <laughs> it won't start. You're going to need a new battery, but it'd be fine. <laughs> Other than that, it'd be fine. And the cake of barn dust. Ah, the Malibu. GM Chevy Malibu is the last car that they sell. That's it. That's the only one. Wow. The new one might look a bit like this. I mean, that's a looker. It's... It's, it has a style of it, and they're really trying to keep that style its own. And I can appreciate that, but, I mean, it, uh, who's, one of got, who's wanted to buy a Malibu? Well, GM President Mar Mark Roos called the design pretty dramatic. I'd agree. That's a dramatic design. It is a dramatic design, especially, I mean, I like the back end, but the mm -hmm. front end has a lot of angles in places I didn't think were necessary, but I do like. Yeah, I'm... Giggity? I'm not sure. I think I like it, but I need to see it in person. I don't know if I like it. It is just a drawing. Let's see if there's any other drawings below. Mm. Oh, you know right. what? That's I like better. it more head on. Just that angle. <clears throat> that it's sure. the angle of this one to where you kind of question the front end there, but when you look at the front end head on, it's very smooth. It's very smooth. It's very uh, 
you know, you have your dimples almost there in the front bumper. Let me tell you what that front bumper reminds me of. Reminds me of those Lexuses. Uh huh. Yeah. That reminds me of a Lexus. They yeah. All got that. Yeah. Sort of. Yep. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's a. Yeah. That's a Lexus front end. Yeah. Uh, let's see if it's got a back end. Nope. No back end. That hey. A back end. Kind not of a bad back like a... end. <sighs> it's not bad, but it's it's. You know what? I've seen uglier. It's kind of serial. It's a serial back end now. You know, we've seen a lot of back ends that look like that, that kind of have that, almost like it wants to be a Porsche. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of disappointed at the back end, but the rest of the car looks great. Well, you'll see the Ultimum battery platform. Uh, China will see it in 2024. We will see it 2025. Should have all the bugs worked out before it gets here, but you might want to work out this next story. So they're they're ending the Corvette, huh? To start a brand new sub brand for the Corvette and the uh, Cadillac, mm-hmm. Chevy Corvette and the Cadillac Escalade will be starting their own brand. This is the Cadillac Escalade behind us. Uh, so the Corvette will have a full two plus two seater coupe and convertible plus a sporty crossover, a mid-sized flagship car loosely linked to the C9 Corvette Corvette, but not appearance, which it looks like everything they've ever it's done. Not, if you're going to start a sub brand and it's not going to look like the C9, what are we doing? What is up with that bus front end there? An We're just going to have a flat grill. What's wrong with it? It looks like it ran up against a building, and they were like, quick, quick, just paint over it. Looks fine, I guess. It's like I any I other. Don't, I don't really like that uh, abruptly f- flat front end. It's an Escalade. You buy it, it's a status thing. You don't care about the abruptly front flat end. Okay. I don't. I don't, it's, it's just, I don't know, it is what it is. It is, yeah. You know what the Escalade, so uh, you, they'll have their own sub-brand. Good for them. Destinations of will be for U.S. and China. Signature on the engine. Very guy nice. Who made it. But who made this next story might be interested in setting records. Ah, here we are again, the MX-5. We're here so often, aren't we? It's almost like the uh, cra- uh, curator of the podcast is a fan of Mazda. Well, actually, this time they did something <laughs> quite extraordinary. They went on a journey of a thousand miles in the UK, visiting famous racetracks and setting record for alternatively fueled cars. They took a trip. Stops at Angsley Circuit in Wales, Oulton Park in England, Knock Hill in Scotland, and Kirkstown in Northern Ireland. 45.6 miles to the gallon with the same two-liter engine that we all know that's rated at 40.9. They got 5.6 extra miles to the gallon. That's quite something. It is. It's really good. It's a really good improvement. This was all powered by fuel made by the e-fuel company, uh, Croyton. That's Croyton, yeah. It's a British company. Oh. oh well, yeah, it's a British company. It. That doesn't fit at all. I don't know. But they're <laughs> setting records. So with alternative fuels, they're getting even better gas mileage. Mm-hmm. And that's good news. Like, it doesn't look bad. Oh, looks. Looks are something. You might like the looks of this next story. This looks like the all-new Audi Duncan Vooter. D- um, Duncan. Duncan. Duncan Vooter. Dunker Vooter. Dunker Vooter. Dunker Vooter. Thank you very much. Oh, Dunker but, Vooter. F-22. Whatever. Power to weight ratio is 666 horsepower per metric ton. Audi sourced a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five tune to make 492 horsepower. 
Five-speed manual transmission, toes and limited slip, 62, 0 to 62 in 2.5 seconds. Top speed, 180, weight, 1,653 pounds. Now, I'm not shitting on this car, but it looks like they designed it to be a certain length, and they were like, mm, we kind of wanted it to be this length. So I like they just kind of stretched it out, but overall, it does work. It's very angular. It, it's very yeah. different. Yeah, but it's like right in this midsection right here. It's like, can we make it longer? Is like, there, a, is there another photo? Ooh. Oh, fantastic. I love how the the hood pops up almost like a hot wheel. Vertical wheels. doors, vertical. And you're also going to like this. It has independent suspension that has an optical an optional hydraulic system that raises the car 35 millimeters for speed bumps. Optically, it looks like it raises it 50 millimeters, but that's where the trick comes in. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and servo assistance for rack and pinion steering option, carbon fiber bits on the, the front and the back, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I think it looks fantastic. I really like the Hot Wheels pop-up hood and mm -hmm. the, you know, suicide. Well, not suicide, but almost like um, a they, vertical doors. Yeah, the Lamborghini doors. Um, really nice touch. And it, like you said, it's very angular, but it it is also stylish. It has a, a certain, like, almost like a DC kind of Playboy flair to it to where you imagine somebody in like a, a, an actor from california like cruising around corners i can't i can't wait to see it in person it's gonna looks oh, like it's gonna yeah. be a, a fantastic oh over. yeah i mean i i i would watch a, any kind of amount of youtube videos on this i don't think this is a very good angle but it's not but it's yeah, it's, it's worth the it angle we got it's worth it we might want to check on the angle this next story Okay, Hyundai Motor Group has all sorts of things going. The global e electric global modular platform, EGPM, is getting an update. Ooh, what a mouthful. That's quite a looker of a vehicle. It is, but a, a global or modular, what? Electric global modular platform is getting an update. So uh, they're switching a, a part out, and you're going to get uh, more range and power and speed. So they're going to stop bottlenecking. Yeah, well, they're going to switch something out for a, the motherboard or something, and it's going to go faster or something. I don't know. Fair enough. The Hyundai Ion 5, Ion 6, Kia EV6, and the Genesis GV60 are all affected. Oh, I did write it down. Look at that. I <laughs> Hyundai will replace the current silicon power module with a third generation silicon carbide SIC <laughs> unit made by STM Microelectronics. That's good, man. Um, uh, replace the circuit board thing, like I said, with a uh, thing. And you go faster. Re replacing the thing with a thing, and you go faster. Or longer, gig ass Korean style. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> let's see what they're let's see what they're doing American style over at Jeep. Ah, honk honk, rattle rattle, shake beep beep. Wouldn't be a Jeep. Mm -hmm. Jeep uh, 4XE has a uh, recall. It's a problem with the hybrid system. The engine shuts down randomly. And it doesn't start up again. I was just Which is talking. fine if you're going to use the electric range, but it just. just I stops. was just talking about how good they were doing. They went from five miles to four hundred to four hundred kilometers. They're having, they're having problems linking it up with the. So thing. it's a problem with the link. It's got to be the engine is shutting down. That the engine shuts down when it's not needed. So I guess it's stoplights. I, I just, you don't need me anymore. I can't do it. 
fucking knows. Come on, I just left. For, I went to into Wawa. I just went into Wawa and came back. Please start. This affects Jeep Wrangler 21 to 23 4XES. This includes models that are on the lot. Ask about this recall before you buy a Jeep. So, do you have the temperamental uh, Jeep that wants to just cry and not turn on? Yeah, we Actually, do. we'll find out when we go for a test drive. See if it starts. <laughs> Sorry, this one doesn't start. If I was the dealer, I'd want to... Let's get all the ones on the lot fixed first. You know, I'm just going to pull into this uh, shopping mo uh, mall real quick and just uh, sit here and put I'm it just going to stop for a moment. Make sure it turns on. Make sure the engine turns back on. But that's still, you know, better to just ask. Everything's fine here. How are you with this next story now? Euro NCAP crash test ratings are in. MG4 scored amongst the best. 83 for adults protection. They score uh, each section of this per uh it's for safety for the different occupants. So the MG4 got 83 for adults, 80 for children uh, occupants, and uh, vulnerable road users, 75. Uh, and safety, of six, safety assists, 78. So uh, compared to others, the... Uh, about to say, and I mean, oh, that sounds great. The what? Mifa 9, I had to have copied that wrong. Meanwhile, earned a 93 for adult occupants. May uh, not be named Mifa. It, it might, it might not. It could be a spell check thing. Uh, uh, they got 80, 93 for adult occupants, 89 for child occupants, 73 for vulnerable road users, and 83 for safety assist. Where is the Fiat 500? Didn't do so well. You're kidding. Got a 78 for adult occupants, 79 for children. A little better there, but you're probably going to have broken bones. A do lot you of want 79% of your child? Uh, yeah, 67 for safety assists. It, it, it was really bad. We do have a picture of the... Some gerbils were injured. We <laughs> do have a picture of the next, uh, the best bus, safest bus award. Safest bus award is goes to the Volkswagen bus. Five-star safety rating from Euro NCAP. Not many get that. The VW ID bus got a 92% for adults, a 78% for children, 60% for vulnerable road users including pedestrians and cyclists for some reason. It scored at ID 10T. 90% on safety features across the board. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, the Volkswagen brand itself has always been very safety focused. It is the car of the people. They, they focus on... A, a lot of, you know, like a lot of things that other manufacturers don't. <laughs> How high the, you know, uh, rocker arms are or, or the rocker uh, panels are. Or how, where, where's the center of gravity? Mm -hmm. They think a lot of mm -hmm. different facets like that where it doesn't actually surprise me that, yeah, <laughs> no way. A Volkswagen van's a safe? No way. You always, especially when you're looking for a new car, you always want to look at the... Uh, who comes out the safest or just not hit anything. Next but, thing you're going to tell me is mom makes the best dinner. But you know, that's why they call them accidents. Oops. Happy little accidents. It's not like you can plan them. No. <laughs> if you are doing some planning though, you might want to think about this next story going on a trip. Well, you might want to think about Peugeot luggage. Peugeot is partnering with Desly Paris, a top-of-the-line luggage company for uh, luggage, trunk, backpacks, it will debut this spring. The Peugeot line of luggage. It's the guy who is so infatuated with his car brand. He's so infatuated... He 
with his Peugeot 408 or uh, Dodge, whatever they call it. He doesn't, he, he not only has multiple cars. Or his it, Peugeot, Peugeot 408, which is an Audi or, or a. Uh, and this is, a, this is an estimate. He not only Alpha. has multiple different Peugeots slash Alphas, he also has multiple different Peugeot related fashion wear. He has a hat. Socks. He has he's got socks. The socks. He's got the Peugeot underwear. He's got the polo. Mm-hmm. He's got Peugeot the polo. No. He's got the fucking windbreaker. And most importantly, <laughs> the Peugeot check. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now he can have the Peugeot bag to put in his pretentious Peugeot. Well, if you want to war with the lion of Peugeot, you might want to be interested in a four-wheeled trunk. Carry pretentious lion on. Peugeot might be the title of the podcast. Carry on luggage, travel bags, business backpacks. The collection also includes a new designed vertical format. There's a picture of the new vertical format below. Would, would you wear a would you would you wear a, a Peugeot backpack? That's the that's the four wheeled thing. I mean lower. Wow. There it is. Would you wear that? Not that bad, I guess. I don't even see Peugeot. There's nothing see, on there. Do you see Peugeot anywhere here? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I don't see Peugeot anywhere there. You know what? I take it back. I will wear that backpack. It's not that bad. It, they teamed with a uh, Paris design company. Delisily. You know what the Paris Sorry, design yeah. company said? How about we just eliminate any Peugeot name or logo and we make a, a backpack? You think it'll sell? Oh, it will sell. Without your name or your logo, it'll be fantastic. I don't know. Whatever. It must be there somewhere. It's probably on the inside. But <laughs> <laughs> right on the other side is how to wash. Oh, delicate cycle only. If you're bursting with automotive news, you might want to pop over to the Facebook site where we post all the latest podcasts and automotive news. Mm-hmm. For lug nuts. All the latest uh, articles and lug nuts podcasts going to pop on over to facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast because it doesn't matter if you drive a Peugeot or a Lancia. Because nothing rolls without lug nuts. We'll see you next week, gang. Drive on! That's where you pipe up, man. So, uh... No, let's bark. Two guys went to the Dodge factory. They tried to steal a couple of Durangos. They, they, They were caught by the fence. They just thought they'd drive right through it. Didn't work. Weren't yeah. caught by the clutch. They had a great they fence. Don't, they don't have clutch anymore. Brace yourself for this one. The Toyota SeaTac HR will be discontinued in the U.S. No! It was an ugly little SUV with, it looked like no space for storage. Yes! We'll see you next week, gang. Drive on! Drive on lug nuts. Bop, bah. I hear me. I hear the real me. The real me, 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 me. Can ya? Can ya? December 11th. A date. Which will start the podcast. Mm. Right after they hit that subscribe button right there. Right above my head. Very best purge hangers and wall hangers video for you. Right above Big Brother's head. That's going to be every single Lug Nuts podcast in a playlist. All 125 of them. And, of course, our podcast doesn't end until we hear our main man, Connor, say... Drive on, Lug Nuts. We'll see you next week, gang. Bye-bye. Drive on, Lug Nuts.